One historically significant argument for Markan priority comes from the pericope order within Mark's Gospel. This argument was popularized by the English scholar B. H. Streeter, and while it was famously shown to be fallacious decades ago, it still turns up from time to time, especially among those scholars who do not specialize in the synoptic problem. As such, it is worth reviewing the argument, as well as its key weaknesses. The argument is based upon the fact that Mark's order of pericopes and events is generally also found in Matthew and Luke, and when either Matthew or Luke has an order which differs from Mark, then the other gospel usually follows Mark's order. Matthew and Luke only rarely agree together against Mark in their pericope order. From this phenomenon, Streeter inferred that Matthew and Luke must have used Mark, as they rarely agree in order against Mark's order. This argument proved persuasive to many scholars and, indeed, it proved instrumental in turning the tide of scholarship in favor of Mark and priority. In reality, however, the argument does nothing more than to establish that Mark is the middle term between Matthew and Luke. Either Matthew and Luke have chosen to follow Mark's order except for when they disagree with him, or else Mark has chosen to follow Matthew's order in some instances and Luke's order in others. In short, the argument demonstrates that dependency exists among the three synoptics and that Mark has to be either first or last, but it does not and cannot indicate the direction of dependency. For this reason, arguments from order cannot establish the priority of Mark. The argument is guilty of what has become known as the Lackman fallacy. As Ward Powers says, there is no doubt that the evidence is completely in accord with and is explained by Mark in priority but it is completely incorrect to think that Mark and priority is the only way to explain the evidence. In fact, the evidence is consistent with all four of the major theories of literary interrelationship and of the numerous variations on these that have been proposed. Certainly, these are not arguments for Mark and priority against Mark independence because they equally support the Mark independence hypothesis. Back in 1951, the English scholar B.C. Butler gave a refutation of Streeter's argument as entire as has ever been offered since. And due to the historical importance of his critique of Streeter, as well as his eminent flair, I quote Butler at some length here. On the basis of this accurate statement of highly important data, Streeter inferred, following in the wake of a distinguished line of critics and himself not the last in the ranks, rests an inference which is obviously false. Since the argument conceals a schoolboyish error of elementary reasoning at the very base of the two-document hypothesis, as commonly proposed for our acceptance, we may be forgiven for devoting to its refutation more space than it intrinsically deserves. The deduction to be drawn from these facts is no longer that Mark contains the whole of a document, which Matthew and Luke have independently used, but that there is a relation of dependence, one way or the other, between Matthew and Mark, and again between Mark and Luke. Is it too much to hope that the Lackman fallacy will no longer be displayed, with every appearance of superior logic, before the imagination of an unsuspecting public, prone to submit to the claim to reason and slow to examine its validity? The cantina of authors listed above as propagating this fallacy should at least suggest a doubt whether the present dominance of the theory of mark and priority is really due, as is commonly supposed, to a triumph of honest criticism over traditionalism and fantasy.